Brayden, it's me, Dixie. Dixie. Are all systems go? Yeah, Adam, he'll, oh, he'll be home any minute now. He's gonna take Junior to a hockey game. What about the video camera? Uh, it's here, ready and waiting. <laughs> well, I'm no Spielberg, but I'll try to keep the lens focused and the tape running. Great. All right, I'll see you later then. Hey, Mom. Was that Ted? Uh, no, no, that was my friend Brayden. How is the, are you all excited about the hockey game? Can I paint my face blue? <laughs> blue? What for? The Jay skating against the Wildcats. Oh. You didn't forget, did you? No, 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 of course not. Uh, did Owen Charles call? Don't ask me. Um, Dad, I think you should change your clothes now. What for? Well, you don't really wear a suit to a hockey game. I'll make sure Winifred has your team jersey pressed. Uh, Dixie, wait. Junior, I need to talk to your mother alone for a few minutes. Sure. Don't you dare try to back out on this game. He's been looking forward to it all oh, week. Dixie, be reasonable. I can't go root for the home team while my daughter's in jail. How is Haley? Well, you know Haley, she's no cream puff. The, the judge hit her with a contempt citation. There's no bail for that. Well, I'm sorry. But she made her choice, and now she's stuck with it. I'm afraid there's nothing you can do. I can get Owen Charles to intercede for her. Oh, Owen Charles, yes. Judge, fix it. Your old golfing buddy, the one with a wave of his gavel, uh, put Max into the custody of Haley and Mateo? Keep your voice down, please. Fine, you know, I, I won't say anything for now, as long as you don't disappoint Junior. It's a hockey game. It's quality time with your son. My daughter needs me. Well, so does Junior. I mean, he's your child too, Adam. He's not a date can, that can be put off or a meeting that can be rescheduled at your convenience. He needs to know that you come, that he comes first in your life. Now, maybe there's nothing that you can do for Haley right now, but you can show up for your son. So leave a message for the stupid judge and take your cell phone to the game. A cell phone? Where, where did I put that damn thing? I know you're in Palm Springs. I just called you there. I don't care if you're on the dark side of the moon. Get on the horn and fix it. Good. Let me know when it's a done deal. You see? Good things happen when you throw your weight around. Now you can go to the game with your son. Well, you come with us. That way, when Owen Charles calls, you can finish out the evening with Junior. No, no, no. This is not ladies' night. This is strictly a father-son deal. Besides, I have plans. What sort of plans? When are you finally going to realize that my personal life is none of your beeswax? Mom, what's all this junk? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Wow. Those are mine. Adam, I didn't know. This will show off your curly white locks to perfection. The designer sent these over for my approval. Ah, uh, now you can finally show off your feminine side. It's for the wedding. Stuart and Marion's wedding. I'm the planning committee. Oh, God help Stuart and Marion. Come on, son, let's hit the rink. Night, Mom. And be careful, okay? Hey, <laughs> I promise I'll bring us both back in one piece. Okay, see ya. Thank you. All right. Can I Excuse watch? Excuse me. Go. Yeah. Dixie's chart. What the hell do you think you're doing? Oh, just doing you a favor. By sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Dixie is seeing Hayward professionally. Well, that's Dixie's business, isn't it? Tat, you're my friend, and I, I want to help you. Well, I appreciate that. You know, but, but what if Dixie's medical records have to do with helping me, huh? L look, look, you're too proud to ask for help sometimes when oh, you need I it. Oh, I see. So you thought you'd volunteer your services before I sent up the flare. Everybody needs help sometimes. Well, the next time you need help, you send out an SOS, I'll come running. In the meantime, you want to help me, then just butt out. I'm asking you to respect my privacy and Dixie's. Look, what if Dixie has some sort of secret she's sitting on that could, that could affect you, well, both of you? That's her problem. I've had it with secrets. I don't care anymore. 
After what Opal just dropped on me, I hope I never hear another secret again as long as I live. What do you think? It's a little frou-frou. Frou-frou? Mm-hmm. That's French for yuck. Mm. Ooh. <gasps> Here. This should be perfect. No. I'm a princess, no? You're a princess, yes. <laughs> but you need to lose the sweater. I beg your pardon? You need a bridal gown. Oh. While you're at it, you could use a groom. Well, I kind of thought he was standing right in front of me. Oh. Well, we, uh, <laughs> we get married. Oh, we go. Sooner the better, don't you think? Now, is that a proposition or a proposal? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh. Our love is so wonderful. No matter how lost we get, we always find our way back to each other. Our love is stronger. It's. It's more stubborn than we are. I want to tell you that I love you so much. That I surrender my stupid pride. I want to be your love. I want to be your wife. I want to feel your arms wrapped around me always. Promise me that you'll always love me. That we'll be together. I promise you the best of my life. with all the sparkles. Oh. It's just a little bit of make-believe. Oh, boy. <laughs> what? You got stage fright? Of course. You don't have to do this, you know. Yes, I do. I want to have something for Junior to remember me. I mean, if I don't get better. The camera's all set. I'll just start the tape rolling, and you give me a signal when you want me to stop it. Okay. Where do I start? What do I say? I'll just tell Junior what you think he needs to know. <sighs> okay, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> hey, roll it. Mom. I know you'd rather be watching um, the X Planet or Storm Racers. <laughs> I'm waiting for me to yell at you to do your homework, but um, if you're watching this now, you know that I've passed on to another place. And heaven is just wonderful. The only thing I'm missing here is you. Now, I'm, I made this tape as uh, something that you can have as a kind of remembrance of me, you know? So you can remember how I looked and, and how I sounded. But this isn't me telling you to brush your teeth or pick up your room. Those days are gone. 
This is um, kind of a companion to the locket that I gave you for Christmas. You remember the one that my mama gave me? If you're mad at me because I didn't tell you that I was sick, I'm sorry. I didn't want you to worry. I did what I thought was best. Because that's what mommies do, right? At least we try. There's so much that I want you to know about me, so much I want to tell you. Like stupid little things like the, my favorite candies, these peanut brittle and, and, and big important things like how much I love you. I've been saving up all sorts of things to tell you for when the time was right, you know, little bits of family wisdom and folklore. Like, um, when you go on your first date, I know you're gonna be just as nervous as a cat, but I'd come up to you and I would straighten your tie and I would tell you, big secret, that girl is just as nervous as you are. <laughs> And when you come home with your driver's license for the first time and you're all excited, I have the funniest story about when your Uncle Will put the family car into reverse instead of drive and we all ended up in Sutter's Pond. I, I, I won't be there when you graduate from college and you throw your cap up in the air. But I know what I tell you. I tell you I'm so proud of you. And I love you so much. Oh, there's so many things I want you to know about that girl that you're seeing. Now, she's the right girl for you. She'll laugh at your jokes. And the stupider they are, the harder she's going to laugh. And if you have that, if you have a girl like that, you can conquer anything. And when you're all set to go out and make your name in the world, I know that your father is going to have a vice presidency all dusted off and a, and a parking space to go with it. And, and if you want to do that, if that's your calling, you know, you go for it. Go ahead and work with your dad. But if you don't, if you don't, run like hell in the other direction and find something that you love, that you want to do as much as breathing, and, 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 and do it as much as you can, and consider it a blessing from God. Well, I didn't have all, all the time in the world, but I'm counting on you to make it to the far side of the 21st century. And I want you to have the chance to do certain things that I, I didn't. You know, like, go, go to Morocco and, and ride a camel, or go to the Grand Old Opry and sing, or, you know, have a mess of grandchildren. And if you have a girl, for crying out loud, please, please don't name her Dixie. <laughs> I mean, I've heard all the jokes. Dixie Land, Dixie Cup, Dixie Bird, Whistling Dixie. <laughs> and um, you could name her something nice and simple, like Bess, you know? for your grandmother, that'd be nice. I, I can't, I'm rambling, you know? I mean, there's so many things I want to tell you, and there's so much, you know, I mean, you're not ready to settle down yet. You have so much to look forward to, so many things you're gonna, you're gonna do for the first time. And I, I know that you're gonna probably get into some kind of trouble, and that's just, that's natural, it's normal, it's understandable, but when you need, when you need some help, real help, I want you to go to Tad. You can trust Tad. He's a wonderful, good man, and he loves you. You can always count on him. Oh. The most important thing to uh, hold on to is that the best years of my life the ones with you in it. I measured your growth with a pencil on an old painted torch. And I measured, I measured my growth by you. Every tear you shed, every smile you smile, first steps that you took. <sighs> but, um, life is about letting go. You know, I learned that the first day of kindergarten when I 
walked you to school and I watched you walk across the playground. And you look back at me, you brave kid, and you smiled. <laughs> That's what I'm doing now. I'm looking back at you, but I'm smiling. <laughs> one, one last thing you might remember about me is I do not like goodbyes, and this one is no exception. So, instead of saying goodbye, I'm going to uh, just tell you that I love you. Because I don't think that death is a goodbye. It's more like I'm right around the corner. And you're going to come right around the corner and meet me when your time comes. And not a moment before. We will be together again. I promise you that. And, um, if you miss me and you can't feel me, just remember that I am as close, I'm as close as a favorite memory. And, I mean, and as near as all the love in your heart. I love you. I love you, sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Christmas. I asked for a tennis racket. I get a new baby brother instead. Adrian Swart, the master spy. How could Opal keep him a secret all these years? I guess Opal was just doing what she thought she had to. Well, I don't blame you for being angry. I'm not angry. I'm just worn out. OK, how about if I take you out and I'll buy you a snack and we can <clears> talk? <throat> no, I appreciate it, Liza, but I don't. I'm not hungry and I don't want to talk. Okay. You know, I've been all talked out. All right. How about this? If you need me, I'm only a phone call away. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. You know what I love about you? My hair? No. When you drop a bomb, man, you don't go halvesies. You go like, you go like nuclear winter. Mm. Yeah, right? I feel like a chewed up piece of string. You come to the right place. Look, I don't have much work left. I can clean up here. We can go tip a few back. No, thanks anyway. I'm going to take Jamie up to Willow Lake. I feel the urge to be a part of something that makes sense right now, and fatherhood's the only thing I can come up with. All right. Well, um, drive safe. If, listen, man, if you need anything, just give me a call. No, there is one thing. Yeah. I love Liza. But try to keep her from playing Nancy Drew, all right? I mean, she means well and everything, but there's really no point. If Dixie really does have a secret, I'm the last person that gives a damn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, come on. No apologies, Dixie. You were wonderful. You know, Junior's very lucky to have you. How lucky can he be if his mother's dying? I don't... I... I thought you were going to the hockey game with Junior. Junior's upstairs. The game was called off when the Zamboni machine broke down. What the devil have you two been doing? 